life. It's as though death grants you this wisdom, this insight, before taking him outside. And in my case, I thought my throat was going to be cut. Former New York Times reporter David Rode was captured by a similar group. Once you're brought into this remote corner of Pakistan, you realize you could be held for years and years and years, and you don't know when it's going to end, and you're very afraid the world is going to forget you. Bergdahl was believed to be held for from, from the Haqqani Network, which is affiliated with the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. I was told I was going to be executed the next day. Langan knows all too well what Bergdahl faced with the Haqqani Taliban. For oddly enough, I've got a problem with having my throat cut. Can I be shot in the head instead? And they, the Taliban had a little conference huddle, and they came out and said, no problem. Instead of cutting your throat, you can be shot. The filmmaker was captured in 2008 and held in a dark room for four months. During my captivity, I set my clock to London time. I used to bathe my children every day at five o'clock. I'd close my di eyes, I'd, I'd kneel down at the bed, and in my uh, I, I could see my and feel my children. Journalist David Rode, who spent eight months in Taliban captivity before a daring escape, says he spent much of his time inside his own mind. I thought of my family specifically on, on holidays. I relived moments, the marriage uh, to, between me and my wife, our honeymoon together. Um, you, you relive these earlier periods in your life as a way to kind of cope and just get through the day. You, you break down each day into a little struggle to just try to somehow keep going. But for Langan, it turned out captivity was the easy part. The real struggle is not in captivity, is surviving, it is when you're released. Uh, and that's when the real struggle begins, bizarrely, coming home. Back home, two or three months after my release, every night for six months, I would just see images of death and beheadings, and I'd wake up in a cold sweat, and if I'd had a gun, I would have shot myself. There's a lot of guilt feelings, frankly, in hostages, and I'm sure that's something Bo was absolutely going to struggle with. But Bergdahl was held prisoner for far longer than these journalists in the remote mountains of eastern Afghanistan. A landscape that Bo's father has pointed out actually looks pretty similar to his hometown of Haley, Idaho. And that may help Bo make what the military likes to call a soft landing back home. Video obtained by the Guardian newspaper shows Bo's father in a tent near his home in woods where Bo used to hike. He says his son could possibly find solitude here. We set this up for him. There's no timetable for his recovery, but Bergdahl's parents say they are up for the challenge. Before he returns home, he will remain under evaluation and treatment at a military hospital in Germany. And give yourself all of the time you need to recover and decompress. There is no hurry. You have your life ahead of you. The long road back to health is tough for any prisoner of war, but for Bergdahl, perhaps even more difficult because of the questions his return has unleashed at home. For Nightline, I'm Neil Karlinski in Haley, Idaho.